Hey guys, it's Kaylee, and welcome back to Hippie in a Suit, where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where indigenous people's drinking water doesn't look like this. Ah! What the hell? And we're back with another deep dive in my SDG series. For those of you who are new to the channel, these videos really go into detail on each of the 17 sustainable development goals which is why they are kind of lengthy. However, at the end of the video, I do summarize the goal in like two minutes. So if you just want a very, very high level overview, you can jump to that section by checking out the chapters in the description box below. And if you haven't already watched my primer on the SDGs, I do recommend checking that out first so that you have kind of the overall framework that each of these goals is a part of. Today, we are zooming in on SDG six, which is focused on clean water and sanitation, or WASH, as you may hear it referred to by the international community. This particular goal has eight targets and 11 indicators that explore a variety of topics related to water, including how we provide safe drinking water and basic sanitation, how we deal with wastewater and prevent water contamination, water use efficiency, addressing water scarcity, preventing conflicts over water, protecting water ecosystems, and more. As always, my blog post is linked below and it has links to all the research I use in this video, resources where you can learn more, and a few organizations who work in this area on this topic that you may choose to follow and support if it's of interest to you. And I do wanna apologize, the lighting is a little bit funky today. I filmed this once and didn't have my autofocus on, so I'm re-filming it after work. Not the best lighting situation, but I hope it's okay. And I also have kind of a new person I'm working with, so I wanted to give a huge shout out to my new researcher, Kenza, who has been helping me to compile all the info in these SDG videos because they're just a ton of research. So thanks, Kenza. It's great having you on board. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. Now, we all know that water is absolutely essential to life. A person can live only three days without water, and not having access to clean, safe drinking water and sanitation causes millions of totally preventable deaths every single year. Beyond this, water is also crucial to the agricultural systems that provide our food, and is used in industry and to produce energy, and is a very critical component of all biodiversity and nature. It is truly one of those issues that is just so inherently linked with many others, and this is why SDG 6 is dedicated to ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Target 6.1 by 2030, achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. To understand this target, let's zoom in on two very important words within it, safe and affordable. So what makes drinking water safe and what makes it affordable? Well, a safely managed drinking water service is defined as one that's located on the premises, is available when needed, and is free from contamination. Safely managed drinking water comes from what is referred to as an improved source. And according to UN Water, this includes linked pipe supplies, boreholes and tube wells, protected dug wells, protected springs, rainwater, water kiosks, and packaged and deliver water. Affordability is very subject to an individual's context. What is affordable in the United States would definitely not be the same as what's affordable in, let's say, Ethiopia, for example. So keeping this in mind, UNICEF and the WHO define affordability as payment for services that does not present a barrier to access or prevent people from meeting basic human needs. This is usually measured by the cost of the expenditure as a proportion of total income. So where do we currently stand on this target? Well, 2 billion people still lack access to a safely managed drinking water supply, which is approximately 26% of the world's total population. The progress on this target is a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, we have seen some very promising improvements. Between 2015 and 2020, there was an increase in the proportion of the global population using safely managed drinking water services from 70.2% to 74%. 
However, on the other hand, the progress we saw varied greatly depending on the region. For example, the good progress just referred to is mainly due to improvements in Central and Southern Asia. And in Sub-Saharan Africa, the number of people without access to drinking water has actually increased from 703 to 766 million people since 2015. So uneven progress. In addition, of that 2 billion overall number, 771 million don't even have the most basic of drinking water services available. Among this more vulnerable group, 8 out of 10 live in rural areas, and nearly half live in least developed countries. On the affordability front, it's pretty much a general rule that the poorer you are, the more of your total income you will spend on drinking water supplies. According to WaterAid, there are countries where people pay nearly half or more of their income on obtaining clean drinking water. For example, I was shocked to read that people in Papua New Guinea spend 60% of their income on water. Just think about what 60% of your total income would be and then imagine spending that on water. It's, it's totally mind-boggling. Target 6.2. By 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all, and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those in vulnerable situations. Basic hygiene is one of those things that so many of us take for granted. Having a toilet or a sink just feels like second nature, but there are literally billions of people who do not have access to these services around the globe. This goes beyond just a dignity issue and is also extremely important for public health. According to the World Health Organization, poor sanitation is linked to transmission of diseases such as cholera, diarrhea, dysentery, hepatitis A, typhoid, polio, and it exacerbates stunting. This particular target is measured by two indicators. The first focuses on the proportion of the population using safely managed sanitation services which are defined as where excreta is safely disposed of directly or removed and treated off-site. The other looks at if people have access to a hand-washing facility with soap and water. Both of these targets specifically focus on the services being available in homes and not being shared with other households. The proportion of the global population using safely managed sanitation services increased from 47.1% in 2015 to 54% in 2020. However, 3.6 billion people still lack access to safely managed sanitation, including 1.7 billion without even basic sanitation services. In addition, 2.3 billion people, or roughly three in every 10 people, lack hand-washing facilities in their homes. Open defecation rates have been decreasing steadily. From 2000 to 2020, the number of people practicing open defecation declined from 1.2 billion to 494 million, an average decrease of 37 million people per year. And while the world is on track to completely eliminate open defecation by 2030, Achieving universal access to safely managed sanitation by the same date will require quadrupling the current rates of progress. Target 6.3. By 2030, improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping, and minimizing release of hazardous chemicals and materials, having the proportion of untreated wastewater, and substantially increasing recycling and safe reuse globally. Target 6.3 sets out to improve ambient water quality. Ambient refers to open, naturally occurring waters such as rivers, lakes, streams, and groundwater supplies. Improving ambient water quality is essential to protecting both ecosystem and human health by eliminating, minimizing, and significantly reducing detrimental pathogens, nutrients, and other types of pollution from entering our environment. This target is measured by the proportion of domestic and industrial wastewater flows safely treated and the proportion of bodies of water with good water quality. It looks at the volumes of wastewater which are generated through different activities and the volumes of wastewater which are safely treated before being discharged back into the environment. This may go without saying, but protecting our water sources is so crucial because preventing contamination is far easier than restoring it after it's already been polluted. Data on both these indicators is lacking to be able to properly assess 
where we currently stand on this target. But let me give you some of the numbers that we do have. For the first indicator on wastewater flows, only 90 countries have reported data. It is estimated that globally, 56% of all wastewater flows generated by households in 2020 were collected at treatment facilities and safely treated. The remaining 44% that are not safely treated are mostly the result of a lack of collection at centralized treatment plants or septic tanks. For the second indicator on ambient water quality, Water bodies were assessed in 89 countries and 60% of them did have good ambient water quality. However, only 52 countries had information about groundwater, which is problematic because groundwater often represents the largest share of freshwater in a country. Target 6.4. By 2030, substantially increase water use efficiency across all sectors and ensure sustainable withdrawals and supply of fresh water to address water scarcity and substantially reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity. This target addresses water scarcity and aims to ensure there is sufficient water for the population, the economy, and the environment by increasing water use efficiency across all sectors of society. Increasing water use efficiency over time means decoupling a country's economic growth from its water use. To this end, water use efficiency is measured as the ratio of dollar value added to the volume of water used. Agriculture, industry, energy, and municipal water supplies are particularly relevant and important to assess and improve due to their high water use. Agriculture is by far the largest water user globally, especially in low and middle income countries. Worldwide, 72% of all water withdrawals are used by the agriculture industry. Other large users include municipalities that use 16% for households and services and 12% used by industries. Encouragingly, between 2015 and 2018, water use efficiency in all sectors increased, but there's still a long way to go. When a country or territory withdraws 25% or more of its renewable freshwater resources, it is considered water stressed. This challenge affects countries on every continent, and in 2018, 2.3 billion people lived in water stressed countries, with 721 million living in countries with high or critical levels of water stress. Another complicating factor here is disparity in water distribution globally. Interestingly, freshwater resources are abundant worldwide, and as a society, we only withdraw about 9% of total resources available. However, these resources are not very evenly distributed across regions and even within countries. In 2011, 41 countries experienced water stress, of which 10 withdrew more than 100% of their water resources. Water scarcity, both physical and economic, is currently affecting more than 40% of the global population. Target 6.5. By 2030, implement integrated water resource management at all levels, including through transboundary cooperation as appropriate. Many different sectors are dependent on water, and as a result, where water resources are limited, conflicts over its use often arise. Beyond just this tension between various water user groups, there is a further issue in that most of the world's freshwater resources are transboundary, meaning that they cross borders of multiple countries, which makes coordinating and cooperation very challenging. In response to this, Target 6.5 aims to implement Integrated Water Resources Management, or IWRM, at all levels. IWRM promotes the coordinated development and management of water and land-related resources in order to maximize economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of ecosystems. Now, I know that definition is quite a mouthful, but it's basically just saying we should be managing the resources we have in a way that balances the economy, people, and the environment, as well as equity. According to data from 2017 to 2020, only 24 of the 153 countries that share transboundary rivers, lakes, and aquifers had 100% of those transboundary basins covered by operational arrangements that make it possible to effectively manage them. And only another 22 countries have more than 70% of those basins covered. 
On average, globally, 58% of transboundary basins have an operational arrangement for water cooperation. In 2020, 129 countries and territories were not on track to meet the target for implementing IWRM by 2030, which includes financing and coordination mechanisms, basin management, and monitoring. Globally, the average implementation rate for IWRM increased from 49% in 2017 to 54% in 2020. The current rate of progress needs to double to be able to achieve sustainable management of water resources by 2030. Target 6.6. By 2020, protect and restore water-related ecosystems, rivers, mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes. Now you'll notice that this particular target is actually aimed at 2020 and not 2030 like most of the others. This is because it's part of the Aichi targets, which are related to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. They were meant to be updated in 2020, but due to the pandemic, that process has been delayed and will probably congregate in spring 2022 to recast these targets. I have a couple videos on that process that I'll link in the blog post if you're interested in learning more about how that is all working. Now, zooming in on the content of this target, Target 6.6 .6 really seeks to halt the degradation and destruction of water ecosystems and to assist in the recovery of those that are already degraded. Unfortunately, now comes the part of the video where I just share some rather frightening statistics about the state of water resources in nature. I apologize in advance for being a bit of a bummer with this. <clears throat> okay. Globally, lake water quality is poor. Of the 2,300 large lakes assessed in 2019, nearly a quarter recorded high to extreme levels of turbidity, which is water cloudiness. Turbidity can adversely impact human and ecosystem health. An assessment of 10% of the world's large lakes in 2019 showed that at least 21 million people, including 5 million children, live within a 5-kilometer radius of lakes with high turbidity. Natural wetlands around the world are in long-term decline, with more than 80% estimated to have been lost since the pre-industrial era. Between 1970 and 2015, inland and marine coastal wetlands shrank by approximately 35%, which is three times the rate of forest loss. The area covered by coastal mangroves also declined globally by 4.9%, which is a little more modest, between 1996 and 2016. It is estimated that globally, one-fifth of the world's river basins are experiencing either rapid increases or decreases in surface water area, likely linked to climate change. Overall, the data on these indicators is extremely lacking, making it difficult to understand the full extent of the challenges we do face in protecting our water-related ecosystems. SDG 6 also features two of those means of implementation targets, which cover capacity building and participation, particularly of local communities and developing countries. They point to the fact that it is essential to have local buy-in to ensure that the needs of end users are being met and that the impact of the development decisions is fully understood by communities to encourage them to have long-term ownership. So let me really quickly read you the means of implementation targets so you are aware of what's included in them. Target 6A, by 2030, expand international cooperation and capacity building support to developing countries in water and sanitation related activities and programs, including water harvesting, desalination, water efficiency, wastewater treatment, recycling, and reuse technologies. Target 6B, support and strengthen the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management. Okay, so that's SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation. I think this one is really interesting because it does demonstrate those strong links between people, the economy, and nature, which is ultimately what sustainable development is all about. I didn't really go into it in depth here, but there are economic impacts beyond just the fact that we use water in many of our industries and agriculture. For example, there's been a lot of studies that have shown that women in developing countries spend so much of their time where they could be being productive in starting a business or, or doing other things for their community in just fetching clean water. So it's one of those goals that really is linked to so many other goals. And I think it's a really important one. I mean, we all know that water is very important. 
I also really worry about this one in my home country of Canada because Canada has massive freshwater supplies like some of the largest in the world, yet our indigenous people still don't have access to clean drinking water as I like briefly touched on at the top of the video. So again, it's so important to remember that sustainable development has not been really achieved anywhere and even in a country with a lot of resources and that's well equipped, there are still vulnerable groups who may be suffering. I think water really points to these issues we need to be just so cautious of in society. So with that, let's quickly summarize and close this one out. SDG 6 is dedicated to ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Target 6.1 is about safe and affordable drinking water. 2 billion people, or about 26% of the world's population, still lack access to a safely managed drinking water supply, and 771 have no basic water supply services at all. In addition, poor people spend a larger proportion of their income on water across the board. Target 6.2 aims to provide adequate sanitation services and hygiene. 3.6 billion people still lack access to safely managed sanitation, including 1.7 billion people without even basic sanitation services. And 2.3 billion people lack even having hand washing facilities in their home. Target 6.3 is about improving ambient water quality, which is the quality of naturally occurring water bodies like rivers, lakes, streams, and groundwater. An estimated 44% of wastewater globally is not properly treated before being released back into the environment. Target 6.4 addresses water scarcity and aims to ensure there is sufficient water for the population, the economy, and the environment. 2.3 billion people live in water-stressed countries, with 721 million living in countries with high or critical levels of water stress. Target 6.5 explores conflict over water both between sectors and groups within a country and between countries that share water supplies. It aims to implement Integrated Water Resource Management, or IWRM, at all levels. Only about 58% of transboundary basin areas have an operational arrangement for water cooperation, and 129 countries and territories were not on track to meet the target for implementing IWRM by 2030. Target 6.6 .6 seeks to halt the degradation and destruction of water ecosystems, including mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes, and to assist in the recovery of those that are already degraded. Overall, water quality is a concern in about one quarter of lakes. Natural wetlands and marine or coastal wetlands are experiencing rapid decline, and river basins are undergoing large changes in surface water area. SDG 6 also features two means of implementation targets, which cover capacity building and participation, particularly of local communities and developing countries. And that's SDG 6. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. If you learned something in this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I'll be back soon with my personal favorite SDG number seven on energy. As always, thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to check out the blog post if you want more information or to continue learning about this topic. See you in the next one. And until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye.